Hi everyone, my name is Pamela Cortez. I am from Microsoft. I'm on the Azure IoT team. I'm a senior PM and developer advocate. My role is to train developers uh, and my background is embedded development. So I'm excited to be at this event uh, to be able to walk through how to connect your device to Azure IoT. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So for this session, we're going to create a managed IoT device leveraging Microsoft Azure IoT services and the STM32 L4 Plus Discovery Kit IoT node. Uh, and even though I'm going to be using this particular Discovery Kit, you can actually use the F746 Discovery Kit as well. We have a couple examples to get you started quickly. Now I'm going to make sure that this presentation is going to be less slideware and then jump into the demo. But before we can do that, I'm going to go over what are some of the products that are going to be mentioned in this demo. Uh, that way we can all level set and understand why we're using particular products when connecting this board to the cloud. Uh, to start off with, you know, we have a great partnership with ST, uh, you know, with Microsoft, uh, it, because we really wanted to make sure that we are having a positive experience for all developers who are trying to connect their devices to the cloud. And in order to do that, we're working very closely with the microcontroller lines. Uh, we're making sure that the development kits are in our device catalog, uh, works nicely with our services and products, uh, and that the tooling is integrated as well. So we're working really, really closely with uh, ST Micro to make that, make that happen. We also are providing projects with the new Azure Embedded SDK using Azure IoT Plug and Play Convention. Uh, we'll continue leveraging this existing development kits and reference design to add support for Azure IoT. So keep looking at our samples. We're continuing to grow support there. High level, Microsoft IoT actually has a lot of products and services when you're building IoT solutions. We have anywhere to help you connect your different types of devices. These could be research, resource constrained devices. These could be, you know, gateway devices, any type of devices we can get connected to Azure IoT. Uh, we also have managed services as well. If you're trying to create an application and you want Microsoft to manage services for you, we do have something called Azure IoT Central, which we won't really cover in this session, but just throwing that out there that uh, we do have the ability for you to quickly connect your device and then visualize the data coming in and take actions out of it. We all have a list of different IoT core services. Really, I like to think of each one of these services like IoT Hub, Azure Defender for IoT, all of these different products and services as Lego blocks when you're building an IoT solution uh, because you don't have to use Azure IoT Central. That's one way to build an IoT solution, but you can use and make your own custom solution by using our core platform services. And if you're curious about how to use these products, uh, I didn't want to throw on the screen, all of the products that support building IoT solutions because IoT solutions are you know, very, very uh, ranges, many different industries, many different scenarios. So you really need to be able to have these different Lego blocks to customize your own solution. But we do have this Azure IoT reference architecture that will help you on which products and services to use. Uh, and then what are the common scenarios and common architecture uh, that you can leverage to get started quickly? Uh, because at the end of the day, really, most IoT solutions have things, insights, and actions. Uh, and most of them are pretty similar when it comes to having those core subsystems of building an architecture. So definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more after this event. One of the products we're going to be using is Azure RTOS. Now, Bill 
from the Microsoft team is doing a session here at this event about Azure Artas. So I won't deep dive too much about it, but I just wanted to cover that really Azure Artas is a full suite of components uh, that really helps you in developing for embedded IoT applications. Uh, we have the our Azure RTOS ThreadX, which is really our small, fast, reliable, real-time operating system. And that's already powering more than 6.2 billion devices worldwide. Um, and each of our Azure RTOS components are fully supported and easy to use uh, to help developers get to market quickly. And this is the different components, part of that suite. As I mentioned just now, we have ThreadX, which is our real-time operating system, but we have all of these other components to make it really easy to get started when you're thinking about embedded development, especially if you need something uh, that requires a real-time operating system. And you wanna be able to connect resource-constrained devices to Azure IoT. We have support there. In order to connect to Azure IoT, uh, and especially Azure IoT Hub, which I'll get to in a moment, which what that is, we have what we call the embedded SDK for C. And what this is, is really a set of libraries designed to simplify the process of sending your messages and receiving messages from Azure IoT services like device provisioning service, IoT Hub, and works with uh, plug and play as well. And if you're maybe have already been following Azure IoT and wondering, hey, didn't you have you know, device SDKs in the past? We did and we still do, uh, but for these smaller devices, we have that special embedded SDK meant for those type of devices, great for MCUs. Now, what we have uh, when it comes to a cloud gateway is Azure IoT Hub. Now, this is meant for when you connect a device, you need some sort of managed service to be able to send those messages to the cloud and also be able to send messages back to the device. And really, that is Azure IoT Hub. Uh, and so you can send up to millions of devices. We have full support for open source SDKs. Uh, and then you're able to do your device management with IoT Hub as well. Um, and then we have end-to-end -end security, which is really important. I think all of us understand the importance of security. Uh, so we have X509 uh, certificate support um, and many other different types of support when it comes on the security end. Uh, and then we have this helper service for IoT Hub called Device Provisioning Service. So really think of this as zero touch provisioning. So you need to be able to register your device, configure your device and get it connected to Azure IoT Hub. Look at Device Provisioning Service, uh, especially if you're connecting thousands and millions of devices and you wanna do that quickly uh, in that zero touch provisioning type of way. Uh, we recommend checking that out but that's all about IoT scale automated provisioning. We just GA'd for our platform services, IoT plug and play. And what IoT plug and play is, it really you know, takes away that idea of that tight coupling between devices and solutions, uh, because that is a huge, huge, problem right now for connecting devices and the solution builders is that these devices are coupled really tightly to particular solutions. But what if you want devices that can happen and go into any type of solution? And instead of just, you know, taking the device, doing custom code every single time on a device uh, for every different type of solution, that could be time consuming. And so we came up with this open modeling language, which is called IoT Plug and Play, um, that has support there to simplify that device interaction and IoT solutions. Kind of think of this as Windows Plug and Play, because uh, Windows had this issue long time before as well, uh, when it comes to connecting you know, peripherals or mics or headphones or anything like that. And we solved this issue uh, with that tight coupling with Windows plug and play. And we're doing the same when it comes to IoT. 
We also have uh, an extra layer of security called Azure Defender for IoT. Uh, so Azure RTOS can easily pull in that extra security from Azure Defender with strict seamless uh, connectivity. And at the end, what that really means is that you can manage those same security across all of your on-premise and cloud workloads. You can prevent, detect, mitigate attacks on all IoT deployment components. You can continuously monitor your security of IoT devices, machines, networks, Azure services, and then you can automatically discover and onboard new devices and apply security policies to ensure compliance with security standards. Uh, and I'll I'll go into this a little bit at the end, but this is just a really nice extra layer of security because you really understand your solution the best and how your device will be in your solution. And that and that keep knowledge is going to help you uh, when it comes to working with Azure Defender. So I'll explain that a little bit more towards the end of the demo. But here's high level what we're going to be doing and stepping through is we're going to go ahead and take that discovery kit. We're going to go and have Azure RTOS deployed on it uh, with embedded CSDK, leveraging that to connect to IoT Hub that we've created. Uh, and then I'll also talk about plug and play and the device provisioning service with that as well. And then I've created a time series insights uh, environment so we can visualize the data. Uh, but all of this is really quickly to get started. So let's jump right into it. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do when you're getting started is go ahead and get your development board. Uh, this particular one, we are using the STM32 L4 Plus Discovery Kit IoT node. I'm really, really a big fan of this board because it already has the sensors on there. I can tell you as someone who teaches a lot, it's just nice to have a you know development board that has all the sensors on there, uh, even uh, gesture detection sensor too which is really nice. And then it has that Arduino Uno footprint. Uh, so if you already have shields, you can already plug it in, uh, reuse those sensors for this particular board. I'm also a huge fan of the other discovery kit, the uh, F746, because it has that LCD screen already on there. So I've been using that a lot as well. But um, moving to this particular demo, we're gonna go ahead and use this kit. Uh, so once you get this board, you're going to want to go ahead and select your IDE and your preferred tooling, really. Uh, today, we're going to use STM32 Cube. But you know, if you're using IAR and you're used to it, you can definitely use IAR and have that support when it comes to Azure RTOS uh, and our Azure IoT products and services. Um, even Kyo and other uh, popular IDEs, too. So I've already downloaded, I've already had this on my machine, the STM32 cube. Uh, the next piece of uh, tooling you're gonna want to install, and this is, this is actually optional, and I'm gonna show you why I like to use this, but this is the Azure IoT Explorer. Uh, it's a cross-platform UI for interacting with devices attached to the IoT hub. Uh, and you'll see in a moment why I'm a big fan of this, but it's uh, all of the codes here. You can download it for free, uh, and you can actually see all of the code on, um, we try to try to have this nice and open for you to view. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and head to the Azure RTOS GitHub uh, page. And so we're going to have all of our repos here. One thing that's really nice about Azure RTOS is that we have everything on GitHub. Uh, so this is, this is nice for you if you want to go ahead and uh, let's say test and explore the source code. You could do that at zero cost. Uh, the full source code is here on GitHub. Uh, you can explore, develop, test, uh, even adopt Azure RTOS to suit your needs uh, for a managed IoT application. So you can see I have ThreadX, which is my real-time operating system, GUIX, and other components. But we do have getting started guides and samples. And for this particular demo, 
I am actually going to use samples. Uh, one thing we just want to always want to make sure is after we do these talks that you could get your hands on it quickly. Uh, so if you have the discovery kit, uh, you could go ahead and leverage these samples or in zip files, uh, but it has nice documentation that comes with it uh, for you to get started. So you're going to go ahead, download that zip file, uh, and then take the project files and put it into your IDE. Uh, so I already have already selected the sample project files. The one I'm going to be using today is sample Azure IoT embedded SDK plug and play. So a lot of a lot of our services all in this one one uh, project file to get started. So before we can actually put our information of what we need here, because there's really two files you're going to change uh, and add some information. But before we do that, we're going to need to create an Azure IoT Hub. And there's quite a few ways to do this. Uh, we try to make it really easy for you. Uh, but one way to do this is you're going to want to sign up for an Azure account. Um, and actually, you need to sign up for an Azure account to work with our products and services. Uh, but I just want to uh, mention that we do have Azure free account that you can get started. Uh, they have you know 12 months of extra free services. Even though it's uh, 12 months of extra free services, keep in mind that IoT Hub has a free tier. Uh, it has all of the features that you're going to need. It just has limited amount of messaging. So if you wanted to get started for free, uh, even after you know the 12 months or after you've run out of credits, we have that free tier for, uh, for the lifetime when you're building your proof of concept all the way into production. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, jump into the portal. I am on my demo account here. And let me zoom in so it's a little bit easier for everyone to see. Now that I have my account set up, I'm going to go ahead and create a new IoT Hub. Um, because I use IoT Hub a lot, I see it in my Azure services when I join into the portal. Just keep in mind, you might not see that when you first join in uh, and create an Azure account. But a way for you to go ahead and create a resource is you can go to the marketplace, go to Internet of Things, and then go ahead and find IoT Hub. Now you can actually type in IoT Hub here. Uh, you can uh, do it this way. You can even do it through, let's say if you're using VS Code, you get, we have an extension for VS Code to create IoT Hub. We even have, uh, if you prefer to do everything in PowerShell or in Bash or even Cloud Shell, which is a really fun feature um, in the Azure portal, uh, you could do that as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, create my IoT Hub. Now it's going to ask for your subscription. Uh, you should have a subscription that's tied to your Azure account. Um, and then you're going to create a resource group. Resource group is just a, a group to host all of your, uh, uh, your products and services, your, your resources. And so for this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So I'm just going to say my resource group. Demo. You're going to select the region. Uh, you're going to always want to select the region that's closest to you. Keep in mind, uh, you when you when you do this and deploy um, to create an IoT hub, doesn't mean that that IoT hub is forever in that region. You you there is options where you can change regions uh, based on let's say you have a device. Uh, like with the device provisioning service and you have a device that is made um, in the US and then is shipped over to Europe, uh, there are 
uh, nice features within device provisioning service where it can go to the particular region, um, uh, which is which is great because you want to be able to lower that latency. So you're going to go ahead and name your IoT hub. So I'm just going to have this T DevCon. Oh, one. And that's not taken, which is great. And then at default, it's going to say standard tier. Uh, standard tier does have a cost to it, uh, but if you're wanting to get started, go ahead and hit that free tier. You get all the features that you want to leverage off of the free tier to get started. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that, and then I'm going to review and create. After I review, everything looks good and then hit create. And this is gonna create a new IoT hub, which is our cloud gateway. And while that deployment's in process, I have already created an IoT hub for this event. And normally this creating an IoT hub can be a couple of minutes it could be, uh, you know, a couple seconds. Uh, but since we're limited on time and I want to make sure everyone sees how to get started, we're going to just jump into this one I've already created. I have created two devices, uh, and for you, for you getting started to create a device, you're going to go ahead and hit new, and you're going to add your device ID. Uh, your device ID is a way for you to identify that particular device. Uh, so this one, I'm just, I can go ahead and say my dev kit 03. And I'm actually going to show on the Azure IoT Explorer, when we look at devices, we don't have that right now. And I'm going to hit save. And it's already created an IoT device for us. And if you go into that device, you can see your information about your primary key, your secondary key, uh, your connection string, all of the information you're going to need to get connected to Azure IoT. So that's all you needed to do to create an IoT hub. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the Azure IoT Explorer. Uh, you're going to see that there's not going to be anything here, and there's going to be a button called Add Connection. I've already added that particular connection to this IoT hub, but in order for you to be able to visualize your device uh, and be able to see that telemetry come in, you're gonna wanna hit the connection string of that IoT hub. In order to find that, you can go to share access policy, IoT hub owner, and go ahead and click on your connection string and add it here. And you can see that says, hey, it's already listed because I have already done that here. All right, so when I click on this, you can see that it's added that third device. The device that we're gonna use today is the My Dev Kit device. Now I'm gonna go back to my project. And as I mentioned before, there's gonna be two files that you're going to want to update. One is the board setup. Uh, the board setup, this is where you're going to make changes or add your Wi-Fi information. Uh, I'm not actually gonna click on that right now because I am recording live. Uh, so I'm not gonna click on that just because uh, I, I'm too busy to change my Wi-Fi password. All right, so the next file you're going to wanna change is your sample config file. Uh, so this is that particular file, click on it. And you're gonna have three places that you're going to want to add information to. One is your, your host name. The second is that device ID. And then the third is your device key. 
And so in order to find your host name, you can find that in the portal. So let me go back to the portal. And that is easy to find an overview. Again, you don't have to do this in the portal. You could do this all through a command line. Uh, but the host name is right here. So you're gonna go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. and place that here, I've already done that. My device ID, remember this is how we identify our device. Um, and so now that we have our endpoint with our host name, uh, so we know where to go to for IoT Hub and we know which device in that particular IoT Hub, now we need our credentials, our device security credentials, which is symmetric key. Uh, so I've already used this one. If you're gonna try to connect quickly, I, I, I've already deleted, <laughs> I'll, I'll already delete uh, this, this device, but uh, security practice, don't ever share this out with people. Um, and the good thing is to, we're really using a, you know, symmetric key, but you should be able to use uh, certificates, uh, you know, and other security practices as well. All right. Now that I have all three of that information in there, I have saved, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build all. And what this is gonna do is build all of the projects that we need for this particular example. Uh, and I've hit that before, but this sample code goes over and has the embedded SDK, plug and play, all of that for you, uh, nicely ready for you. So if you're curious on what that looks like, uh, I know our session is really short today, but I recommend taking a look at that code. And uh, it even talks about how to enable your device provisioning as well. So after you build, you're gonna go ahead and debug. Uh, you could do that a couple different ways. You could hit F11, you could debug this way, uh, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna download, run on the device. And I have had this device running for a little bit now. And you can see I'm using Termite but really I didn't need to do this. Uh, it was just a other way for me to kind of showcase what's going on and see that telemetry come in. But when you're in the Azure IoT Explorer, you can hit your particular device. So this is one that I've created, the My Dev Kit. You can go ahead and start seeing that telemetry come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Start. And you can see the telemetry is being sent, the timestamp, and that it is working and it's being sent up to the hub. And if you're even curious on how that looks in the portal, we do have a, a view of seeing, oh, you know, you've been you've been sending messages up here, and you can start to see device to cloud messages that are coming in, and how many connected devices you have for that particular hub. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. We have the state call direct methods. This is a great way to uh, go ahead and invoke a method with on your board. So for this particular example, you could see here I got telemetry going, let's scroll all the way down. I'm gonna hit reboot. And I'm gonna say for the payload, I'm gonna time out. So think of this as kind of, for example, I'm gonna do a reboot right now and I'm gonna hit invoke method. But let's say you had an LED on this dev board, which, which you do, you could uh, go ahead within your code, uh, do sets or set LED state and then change it to true or false to turn the LED on and off, uh, which is which is a nice feature. Uh, but really direct methods is to be able to kind of send that command down. So I'm gonna invoke this message and it was successful. So let's see if it 
happen? Yes. Okay, we reboot with a payload of timeout 500. Perfect. You could even do cloud to device messages if, if you need to have that for your solution. And here is the IoT plug and play component. Uh, for this particular one, you can see that the models are nicely set already for us for this particular example. We have our type, which is telemetry. Uh, we have name, which is temperature. Uh, we have the description, which is temperature and degrees Celsius. The schema, which is double unit degree Celsius. We can set you know, our, our properties, which is target property. So this is a great way for you to get quickly started with plug and play with this particular sample. One last thing, or second to last thing I wanted to show you is time series insights. So you could use time series insights to store and visualize your data. And this is this is really great, especially if you have a lot of devices or even one device. Uh, for example, if you have, let's say, a sensor on a machine on the factory floor. Uh, I used to work in a factory floor running pick and place machines. Uh, if you have a, you know, a, a sensor on there and the machine uh, stops working or anything like that, uh, you can nicely visualize that. So for this one, I can see what my temperature data is. Uh, for this particular device, I can see how many events that I sent up to the cloud. Um, I'm sending up an event every five seconds, uh, but you could see that. But this, what's nice about Time Series Insights and our other products and services is that you could take, start visualizing quickly, but also gather those insights. As I mentioned before, if like a pick and place machine goes down on the factory floor and you will be able to visualize you know, the, the change, uh, and then you would be able to create an alert to then message or email your service worker on the factory floor, which is really nice uh, to be able to take those insights and actually do something with them quickly. Because uh, lots of times, if if you have a machine on the floor that's not working, I think we all can understand that uh, uh, that is time where people are standing around uh, and when you know when we should be building building our next product. So it helps with that downtime and less latency for us to be able to send alerts quickly. I made a mention of Azure Defender. If you're interested in learning more about that, if you go into the security blade under settings, you could set up custom alerts. Uh, you have different views in the Azure Defender uh, and you could set it up. But what's really nice about Azure Defender, it's not just for IoT Hub, it's for all different products and services at Azure. Uh, so you can actually see security across your whole workload. Uh, this is really great if, let's say, you have a VM running and it's going to give you security recommendations on that VM and tell you the health of that VM. Um, or if you have your devices or your storage, you get to see that full workload. Um, and you're able to create custom alerts too. For example, for this particular one, I can create an alert that says, hey, for this particular device, outbound, outbound connection to IP address is not allowed. You can set those. Another great example is these other custom alerts uh, for uh, one that I really like to mention, number of file uploads that allowed range, or unauthorized operations or login of a, un, you know, a user that wasn't supposed to be in there or messing with the device or message size to uh, what that threshold is, which is really important. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of different options to create the custom alert rule. Uh, it's just an extra layer of protection for your IoT solution and for your devices. All right, so that was an end-to-end -end demo of our products and services when it comes to connecting to Azure IoT and getting started quickly.
So I'm gonna list off a couple of different resources for you. One is our Azure RTOS landing page. You know, if you're wanting to get started with Azure RTOS, you know, if, and you know, get to the documentation where you have the samples to go ahead and connect with the discovery kits, uh, go ahead and go to that link. Uh, and then the link to the GitHub is right there as well. Uh, next is that full documentation for all of the components. Uh, there's, you can find that on our docs site. And then if you have technical questions. So if you have a technical question about Azure RTOS or about our SDKs or IoT Central or anything like that, we do have Microsoft Q&A. Think of this as Stack Overflow. Even though, you know, uh, myself and fellow engineers were on Stack Overflow and other places uh, monitoring and making sure that, hey, uh, you know, do folks need help in the community? Microsoft Q&A, we have a full dedicated team where we're watching for those technical questions there. So you can submit uh, any question that you have to that form. And then for latest announcements and online training, uh, we have the Microsoft IoT Dev channel. Uh, this is a YouTube channel uh, where you could go ahead and hear, you know, as I mentioned, the latest announcements, but uh, we have these deep dives where I run every Wednesday and we train on a new product and service. We bring in different partners. So it's just a great way for you to stay up to date and uh, go ahead and do some more online training. And then we have a full IoT tech community at Microsoft. Uh, you know, we have one for Azure RTOS, but we have one for all things IoT. So if you have a project that you love to share with us, uh, maybe with a discovery kit, we would love to see it. Uh, we're on there monitoring and uh, wanting to hear your feedback. Uh, if there's a feature that you want to see or samples built, let us know. And that's a great way to provide that feedback. So I wanna thank all of you for staying and listening to, to the presentation. And hopefully this gives you a little bit more insights on how to get started. You could see that in less than 10 minutes, I was able to go ahead, uh, get the code and, uh, and start connecting and sending data up to the cloud and then visualizing. Uh, granted, I had the tooling set up, uh, which is, uh, you know, if you already have ST, um, STM32 cube, uh, it goes a lot quicker, but uh, keep in mind, it's. I would say if you're just downloading everything from scratch, learning and following this video, you could probably get started in under 20 minutes. So thank you so much again, and I hope all of you are staying safe and having a great day. Okay, bye.